for the Canadian Signal Corps emblem. Swift, skilled, and alert. And uh, if you want more information on the Royal Canadian SIGs, just look that up online. They have a site, and it's rather interesting if you're in interested in uh, the history of radio in Canada. And my interest was during the war, so... Uh, here we have Cassie's theme when my father went to Good Hope after leaving Fort Norman. One of his friends there married Cass and she was pregnant when he left and uh, unfortunately the day he showed up at Fort Good Hope he was given the news that Cass and her baby both died in childbirth so not a very pleasant day. If you go on to the RC rigs, you will find that they have a lot of history of the Northern Radio Communication System, which was in large part put in during World War II. So they have pictures of the people and the places, so it's rather interesting. Here we have the Radium King, which was the uh, riverboat that uh, they used quite a bit to move equipment and men around from uh, fort to fort on the river. Mackenzie River and here's the newspaper article which uh, talks about uh, Cassie Lynn or Cassie Christian as we knew her or as my father knew her I feel like I know these people I've seen this stuff and read this stuff so often yeah this is a picture of Cass probably in uh, April late April. I think you'll probably notice that she uh, does look pregnant there. And I believe this is her husband, Carlisle Christian. And here we are at Fort Good Hope and uh, the boys set up a tent right away as soon as they got there. And then they set up a second tent the next day. And this is where they were going to set up their radio equipment. And this is called Indian House and it was uh, loaned to them by the Hudson Bay Company as a temporary measure and this uh, fellow on the left, Bill Carson I think he's a radio operator, I don't know that for sure but soon after they set up the new station there he leaves which sort of says to me he was no longer required there to operate the radio so here's Jack and Sergeant Phil Tuck on July 8th they have a temporary quarter set up there. I just kind of took a video off of RC Riggs of that picture because I don't have a picture of him. Um, there's the Carson family. And they were living in that house behind them. This is the entrance to the Hudson Bay Company coming up the hill, and it's, uh, I guess it was rather scenic at the time. Dad wanted a picture, and there's their radio equipment. And I found this um, picture on the Northwest Territory picture uh, site. And I recognized it as being one of my dad's pictures as that is my father's writing on the right hand corner over top of that box and the signatures there there's uh, Jack Hill at the top and Herb and Dave and Phil Tuck at the bottom and this picture was submitted by my nephew which I <laughs> was a bit uh, happily surprised to see that on there And this is when the plane was leaving with the uh, Carson kids and Mrs. Carson to go to McPherson, I believe. Yeah, there's the uh, f few shots of planes up there. They were uh, rather important to moving people and, and soldiers as well around. 
we are cutting wood. A lot of that. And the engineers are showing up to uh, get ready to build the new site. Think of how long will it take them to put up a new site? Well, they showed up in July. And I believe the site was totally operational in November, so... And that was like five or six buildings. You can see Phil Tuck at the, at the far right, walking towards us in L. Lofton, or L. Harvey, rather, facing the tractor. And here we are building the new construct. So as you can see, there's a lot of work there. That's just one building of, I believe, five buildings they put up. And every once in a while, U.S. Army planes would drop in. And distributor with the barge. Well, this is a common sight up there. Distributor dragging barges back and forth. And the Imperial Oil Company, who brought in their supplies for this build. And there's Dad standing in front of the build. Which is going on in the background there. This is 1944, and there's the temporary station that they put together. This is a walk around at the back of the town. Uh, the front of the town's on the Mackenzie River, and the back goes on to this creek. And then down at the peak of the peninsula, there's the church and the mission. And just an inside shot of the church. If you go on to the Northwest Territory site, You'll see lots of really good pictures of the inside of that church, was, which is quite colorful. Paul Luchan's boys, they're, um, they're in a few of Dad's photos. And I think this is Jackson House, not positive, but I think it is. I think that's where Jack and the boys, the single men, lived. And this is next door, I'm not sure if that's Luchan's garden or not. There is probably his wife and his mother. Well, the other big thing up there, if it wasn't hunting <laughs> and getting pelts, it was getting lumber. I guess there was money in both. And let's see. Yeah, we're into winter. And I think you'll see some of the photos are taken right in that doorway there. Photos of the personnel that dad's included. And here's a little walk around the town. That's on the creek side. And the dogs, lots of dogs. Everybody's got dogs. And I think that Paul Luchin's house is right there. I'm not positive, but I think that's it right there. So here you have it. Phil Tuck was with his wife Kay. Dave Allison and Jack in the back. Herb Wilmore at the bottom right. And his wife will show up in December. Gene Clayton, and they get married in Fort Good Hope. John Uwachewski and his wife Terry. John came in at the beginning. He's a company cook. And there's a good picture of Phil and Kay. And the girls, Terry and Kay. And Gene hasn't showed up yet. of dad on his skis and I believe we still have those skis somewhere yeah I noticed a lot of uh, ladders going up the second story of the places up there um, they had a few chimney fires seemed to be a regular thing up there fires I'm not sure if that's Dave's boat there but it might be Quick shot of the Mackenzie all frozen up. And as you can see, all the buildings are finished. There's Paul Luchin and his family. I'm not sure, but I think Paul did a fair bit of work for the... For the um, 
Got some bay company. And he met the planes too, so he probably picked up the mail and stuff. Here he's taking his team out to get some ice off the river. They store the ice in huts and uh, use it for refrigeration in the summer. So here he is gathering up a chunk of ice. seen the other one where they have huge saws that they cut slabs of ice out and load them up, but uh, not in this case. Now he's headed out to the airplane. Look at all the fuel. They gotta take the fuel to the plane out in 45 gallon drums. Yeah, this is funny. All these guys are smoking, even the pilot. They're not smoking just yet, but when we watch the next scene, I think you're going to see them all smoking. The guy fueling the plane sitting on top, that's the pilot on the right-hand side there. With the cigarette hanging out of his mouth, he's reaching for it. That's the pilot. I think those three guys there are RCMP. Here's a little walk around town with the video camera. This will be into 1945. We're getting close to the end of the war. And a lot of people probably don't know it, but you go down north. You don't go up north. You go down. It's a the river flows northward. An Indian house looks like it's rather vacant. Look at all the new buildings that popped up. Storage sheds and equipment sheds. Power stations, residents. So at this point, Dad had left and he was replaced with Ken Slater. And Ken was, I noticed a lot of his photos in the Northwest Territory photo collection. So I think he was probably an avid photographer as well. I think a lot of the pictures you see were developed right there at the at the site. Um, these guys were learning how to develop their own film, I guess. It, sending it away, you never knew whether you'd get it back again. So this is it. This is the clan that was there at the end of the war. And uh, this is a year later in 1946. Dave Allison's still there. Al Harvey's still there. And this new fellow, Gene Cowley. Who, uh, I don't know if I ever came across his name before. Meanwhile, Dad's gone off to Edmonton. And I'm not sure if Dave's got sergeant stripes there or not, so he might have he might have got a promotion as well. Because as you can see, my dad, Sergeant Jack Hill, now he's a sergeant in Edmonton. So he, he's... Uh, got promoted since uh, Good Hope. Mm -hmm. 
and he bumped into a few old friends in Edmonton before he left, and he also went to a fair time for a little r and &R. I thought these photos were rather entertaining. Edmonton in 1945. And there you have it. The war is over and Jack's on his way back to Toronto. <laughs>